Hey, South Asia Valorant players, I'm Sean Garris. It's Kusta. And Michael from Genji Valorant here with some really exciting news. We have teamed up with LG Ultra Gear and the Esports Club for Season 2 of The Gauntlet. The winner of TEC Gauntlet Season 2 will receive an exclusive one-on-one -on -one mentoring session with our Valorant team to help identify areas of improvement in their game to prepare for a higher level of gameplay. In addition to that, we're going to be reacting to some of the top plays throughout this competition. Guys, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so make sure you don't miss out on this. Good luck to everyone competing from everyone here at Gen.G Valorant. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the LG Ultra Gear DC Gauntlet, not the season two, but actually going to be the All Stars event powered by WB Black and AMD Ryzen Radiant. Sadly, it's not going to be season two, but hey, it's going to be just as exciting, if not more exciting, because what will happen if you put in pro players and sprinkle in a couple of streamers as well who have built their entire career to try and entertain us here, Universe? What do you think is going to happen? I mean, I don't really know what's going to happen, but it's definitely going to be entertaining, that's for sure, because we've yep. seen a lot of these players, you know, uh, pro players who, uh, you know, the, in their, when they stream, they play with each other from opponent teams. It's just their, how they are. They're all friends at the end of the day. And now they're going to be playing with each other while mm -hmm. they have somebody who's been making a living out of the streaming world itself. So, you know, these uh, streamers themselves are not too bad. They themselves, mm -hmm. you know, have played in some of these uh, games. They've played in some of the tournaments that have been organized. And they have some skills that could be put into use today. So, yeah, it's definitely going to be an exciting match. Yeah, it's going to be an insane one indeed. But at the same time, all these players, I really want to see how they're going to be coexisting with one another this time around. Because normally you always see these pro players always play with their own teams, build upon synergies, build upon strategies. And now you pretty much will throw a lot of the strategies out of the window. Maybe a couple of fast rushes, a couple of beam strats, a couple of euros here and there sprinkled around. We never know. But you do need to remember, ladies and gentlemen, in this tournament, the stakes are high. The prize money is also there. And Universe... I do believe that all these streamers and these pro players are going to be trying to go in for that fight as well here. And I'm really excited to see what they're going to be bringing on down to the table. Because normally we always see how a lot of these players are fighting against one another from the perspective of pros. Let's see yeah. what happens when the tables are turned. And now we got the random element mixed in as well. So let's head on over to the brackets here, ladies and gentlemen. See 
which of these players and which of these teams are going to be playing this time around. And honestly speaking, you do have to say right at the very beginning stages, we're going to be watching Team Alpha going against the side of Team Bravo. It's going to be an interesting one for sure. Yeah, it most certainly is going to be an interesting one because we've got uh, two very interesting teams over here. Firepower is something that I think is an understatement when you look at uh, you know either one of these teams, be Team Alpha or Bravo. And uh, I mean, I would love to see how exactly it all turns out because we know that we've got Hydra Flick, we know that we've got uh, Raman also playing, and you know there's a lot of uh, pro players who've been thrown into the mix. Now we got Bullet, we got Sai, we got Excali, we got a lot of these players coming in who are just gonna, I, I mean, I really hope that as good as they are while playing on, you know, in in the season of the TC God at the main stage, I really hope that they have just as much fun today because I would love to see some your play coming today if somebody wants to pick it up, you know? It's not, it's, 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 it's no harm, it's no harm, right? I mean, yeah. you are you are competing for a good enough price for, you know, 50,000 is uh, something that, you know, most people can only dream of and these players have a chance of getting it. And uh, yeah, they should be going in for it. But at the same time, I really want to see a lot of different things coming you know, like, uh, you know, as much fun as possible. You know, if you want, if you want the most weirdest lineup, right? I mean, you could go for Yoru, uh, KO, Breach, Viper, and uh, I don't know, throw in brimstone all all of these five agents in the same lineup and you gotta see everything go haywire but i would love to see that honestly and the main thing that i want to see is an old flasher agent composition and i feel like Ooh, yeah. one of these teams could just pull that off imagine a situation reach sky euro uh euro reina and then also a phoenix just flash it out of every single corner put it on breeze put it on icebox and it's just gonna be even more entertaining ladies and gentlemen so let's head on down over to the map screen and see exactly where we're going to be headed with both of these squads because honestly speaking i'm kind of excited to see from the very start up to all the way to the very end because it's going to be team alpha picking up haven right at the very beginning so haven is a map in our entire region that has been picked up constantly and there's not been a lot of switch ups on this map in particular it literally replaced ascent as being one of the most played maps in yeah, I mean, it has been one of the most played maps, right? I mean, you would expect it. Even Ascent, uh, ha Ascent and Haven both have been um, pretty much, you know, the standard go-to map for any team over here. And Bind is sort of, you know, comes and goes out of the mix, but it's it's almost frequently there as well. And uh, we can see Team Alpha has picked up Haven, while Team Bravo has gone for Bind. I mean, I believe that Team Alpha going for Haven is no surprise, because I think that's the team where we see Psy playing, Psy and Excali, I believe. That's where they play in that team, and I, I wouldn't expect him to pick out any of their map, because we know how Team Exo, when they play on uh, the map of uh, Haven, how good they are. And uh, here it is, they've gone for Haven with a few other play systems, so I'm, I'm waiting to see how exactly it's all going to turn out. But, uh, Haven might just be a little bit more of a comp competitive match than Bind, I would say, because of the fact that, you know, uh, it, it's a map that has a lot of invariability. Like, we all know it's huge, it's got three bar it's got three sites. It, it's just however you want to approach yep. it in terms of attacking more so than defensing, defensively. So, yeah, we're going to see how Haven goes down. Bind, I think... Uh, you know, could be a little bit of a, uh, you know, a debatable matter. I think that Hydra Flick could be going for a raise on both yeah. these maps because we know that he, how good he is on that raise. But yeah, I'm just waiting to see what the composition is going to be like. It's going to be an interesting one for sure because a lot of these pro players, they, they are known for their adaptability. But can we say the same about the streamers who are known for their individual agent play style? So they should be going in for their comfort agents. But how good are the comfort agents going to be playing when it comes down to the map of Haven? Because you know for a fact that Raze is just not as potent and powerful on the map of Haven. But still, a lot of these content creators, they are known for their raises for a reason. And they can make things work out of absolutely nowhere. So I'm really excited to see what kind of different strategies we can normally see. Because as we are analysts, we have seen these exact same strats over and over again. And we talk about things that are exactly the same. But now, with a couple of twists being thrown here and there, things could just get a lot more interesting as well. The teams are getting prepped up, ladies and gentlemen, as they are going to get kept up. I'm really excited to see, in particular, what we could see on the map of Bind. Because Bind is a map that is known to be very puggish and very rush-heavy. Not really a lot of rotations, not really a lot of 
differences in the way you play that map. But now, I do think that Bind could be the most interesting pickup in comparison to any of the other ones in particular. So let's see what we can happen here. And Universe, I want your thoughts. Do you think that Bind will be a lot more interesting or do you think that Haven would be much more the interesting affair? Because in my eyes, I believe that Haven could be a little bit more one-sided towards the team that has a lot more strategic basis and a little bit of a better RPG. I mean... I would have to say that, you know, it is uh, here and there a little bit. Haven could be uh, one-sided if, and given the fact that, you know, we have something like, I don't know, momentum shift, or like you said, could be one-sided based on how exactly the players on one team are playing. But yeah, we're going to have to wait and see because, oh, there's one thing for sure that we need to keep in mind is that uh, as much momentum based as we can see this map to be, uh, there's always that, you know, moment where the opponent team could have something running their way. Let's say the 9 to 3 curse, if that comes up or uh, oh, whatever no, don't it is. Talk that, about that. <laughs> there's any, anything could come up at any point in time. Uh, but I think, yeah, you're right. Haven could be more of a one sided game if. Uh, there's one team that starts to, you know, uh, put the pedal right down to the brass tacks and, you know, hit the gas as hard as they can and just not let the other team off their pressure as, at, at all. So then then maybe we can see uh, sort of a, uh, you know, one side of battle come in over here. But I would like to believe that, you know, Haven, uh, there's no strategies. Like you said, strategies get thrown out of the window because you're not playing with your team. You're playing with people who... You've watched over here and there, maybe talked about, talked to and talked about here and there, but you not really, you know, have a chance to play with this particular exact team. So no. they're just going to go with the feels of it and let's see who's uh, feeling a little bit more on the slower side on more on the faster side. Yeah, the teams, they have a lot of aim to work with as well. I don't think that we have to worry about the aim department. Everyone here is an aim star. Everyone's going to be here to hit their shots, but it's all about the brain games. Who's just going to be the one with the better IQ? Who's going to be the one pulling off strategies that will throw the other person in the loop? And the thing is, Haven is the best possible map to do all of this. When you consider Bind, it's just not as there. And for Ascent, I always say that, like, a lot of people will disagree with me, but I personally do believe that Haven is a map that is built upon pretty much aiming. Like, I would say that on Haven, if you have the better aim, you're going to be able to win. Breeze is in a similar boat, but at the same time, not in a similar boat, because that map, it's where strategy reigns king. But you also need to have incredible aim to take a lot of these long-range gunfights, because long-range gunfights are the hardest thing in comparison to the close-range ones. And on Ascent, the thing is that there is a medium range gunfight distance. And in the medium ranges, anyone can have really good aim. So whoever has a better aim in those type of fights will be the one to win out on a lot of those different fights here. But now with the first initial map being this, I don't know, man. Haven is something that I'm kind of on the fritz about. We have seen a lot of incredible strategies here, but at the same time, the controller pickups could be, sorry, the initiator pickups could be the thing that makes it or breaks it for a lot of these teams here. Either they go in for the double initiator, especially after the nerfs to Jet. Jet is a lot more difficult to play, especially on Haven. And Haven is a map where Jet can reign supreme every single time. I really want to see, will Jet be one of the primary pickups here or will people actually stray away from her? Her right click is not as good. She doesn't have the three cloud burst. Normally on Haven, you would rely on the Jet to re-smoke the Heaven angle every single time when you're going on down towards the A side. As soon as long as your controller cannot go in for a re-smoke there. Whenever you pick up Omen, let's say an Astra, you need a little bit of time to place down the stars, place down the re-smokes, and then go in for this execution. But now that Jet only has two claws, where she uses one on the execution, she can no longer smoke CT if she needs to. And where's third smoke? They don't have anything. A lot of decision-making needs to be made here, and a lot of changes to strategy need to be done. I really want to see how these players, and also these four players, have actually tested out these different strategies, but they actually adapted to the new play style Jet brings down to the table. That is my real question. But at the same time, Universe, what are your thoughts on Jet in particular after a lot of her changes? Do you think she's in a similar spot as she was previously? Or is she going to fall to the bottom of the barrel and a lot of these players are not going to pick a nerf? You know, I think that Jet, even though with the nerf, it has not fallen to the bo bottom of the barrel. Definitely not. Even though there's this one, even, you know, uh, there's one less smoke available for her and the right click is just, well, basically non-existent at this point, except for the one kill that she can get. A jet is still a viable agent. It's it's just become a little more precision based. I feel yeah. because you know with the right click, it it's really 50, 50, 50, 50. No, leave that. It's almost 70, 30, 70 percent of times you don't hit it, 
30% of the time, if you're lucky, you get that kill. Because even if you hit three knives onto that person, you're going to give 135 damage at times instead of the 150. And it's, and it's really annoying. So now people have to get used to the fact that they need to use the left click and be more precise in the way that they shoot those knives, right? And that gives an advantage to not only players who are, you know, proficient with their aim at Jet, who play Jet a lot because... You know, there, there are players who rely on their right click so many times, you know, in the eco rounds, uh, you know, and it works out for them because it's rechargeable. It comes back immediately. You get the kill. You're up front with them. Even if you're at a 10 meter distance, right, 10, 20 meters, that right click still hits. So that's what the advantage for that is. But now that's been completely nullified and uh, there's one less smoke as well. So you can't play around with your own smoke for too long, but just yep. long enough for you to, I don't know, maybe escape or let your teammate, like you said, you know, smoke off heaven for a bit. Should give them enough time. I don't think that is that much of a nerf, but I think that it does tone her down a bit. Her mm -hmm. aggressive potential has been uh, taken off. Uh, you know, at least by 30, 40%, I believe. But still, she is still uh, one of the best agents in the game. You know, if you are somebody who just relies on your pure godly aim, then Jet is definitely the go-to for you because those knives are accurate as they can get. Your aim gets better, you know, with the operator because, well, you practice, you dash away, you shoot, you have a smoke to cover off yourself. You have the updrafts as well. You can do whatever it is with Jet that you can do with other agents because she's unique like every other agent is. And yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how exactly, who exactly picks it up as we head in towards the agent elections now, ladies and gentlemen. And aggressive, we already see a Jet and it's obviously no other than Paradox. No one other than Paradox. Yeah, Knight Rider and Paradox. Yeah, these two are the jet planes. These two are the ones who are on the MVP standings, ladies and gentlemen, for our gauntlet as well. There's a very good reason why. These two have been tearing up the server constantly with their incredible jet plays. And just as you say, that no one's going to be shifting away from the jet. Not just yet, because jet is still going to be good. You just have to rely a lot more on your left clicks instead of your right clicks. And personally, even when I was playing jet on the higher end lobbies, she felt good. She's not too bad. She's workable. She just requires you to be a little bit more passive instead of the old aggressive play style to make things work out a lot more in your favor. But the primary question that I have is both of these teams have actually picked up Arena instead of a Phoenix. And you know that I'm a real advocate for Phoenix. Having a Phoenix on the map of Haven is a must-have for me in particular. But I do believe that Reyna could also be a really good pickup because that's much more comfortable. You have to rely less on utility and you can rely a lot more on gunfights. And with Reyna, the best thing about her is that you can throw a flash pretty much anywhere, even through a wall. So you can set up your teammates properly for multiple different engagements and also set yourself up in the process. The thing with Phoenix is that you need to enter with your own flash. But with Reyna, you can set up your teammates for entry with your flash. So these type of dynamics could just work out beautifully for both of these squads. But at the same time, hey, we have to introduce the rosters now, don't we? Yeah, we do. And there it is, guys. You can have a look at it. It's Gargod, Hoax, Rio, Knight Rider, and Hydra Flick on the team of Bravo. Whereas on Alpha, we've got Roman, we've got Paradox, Blackhawk, Psy, and Batman. Pretty much a stacked up lobby here, ladies and gentlemen, as we enter into the first match of the TEC All-Stars. And we have got an A push coming in almost immediately from the side of uh, Team Alpha. As Knight Rider looking on towards shot, not got any success yet, but Rhea's gonna oh, kick a little gunfire. He actually finds one, Paradox comes back for three. And just like that, Team Alpha is just aggressing and Paradox getting a little too ambitious, gives up his life as a retake comes in. Yeah, he just oh, holding the WP and he's not going to be letting go of that. The turret is going to be the one to win out against the fighting against Hydra Flick. And the morale just started. It's already done in Destin with Robin Chopra getting another kill down on the host. Uh, Universe, did we, we just start the round and... Uh... Yeah, we, we just started. Yeah, I know. We, we, we just started. It's okay though. Paradox uh, came out of nowhere, got a 3k, dashed in towards defender side and he said, Okay guys, you know what? I don't want my life anymore. I think I've got my purpose achieved. Three is all I wanted, and I'm going to give away myself now. And he did. It's okay, though. They still won it out. So, Team Alpha, kudos to you. But right now, we've got a semi-force buy of sorts come in. We've got two marshals in place, and Hydroflix holding one of them. He gets spotted out, and they know that he is a marshal, so they're not going to be contesting him too keenly right now. As we've got Blackhawk. Oh, beautiful shot. Blackhawk. Not the usual yeah, agent he plays there right now, but he gets blown into the head. And now, Sai. 
He's allowing his teammates to gain some control towards the C-Set. Paradox finds another two for himself. Oaks looking for one. He gets it. Paradox with another 2EK. I just have a fourth. Yes, he will. Oh, Paradox. Oh. Spikes here. Hoax almost got it, but Paradox is just too quick. And within two rounds, that man's already got seven kills and already has his ultimate online. Okay, uh, Paradox. I know you're having fun, my friend, but this is uh, almost... Oh, mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, honestly speaking, Paradox is one of those players that literally will never show anyone mercy. He's going to run you down. He's going to tear you down piece by piece. And he's not even going to think about it for a single second moving on down the line here. So Paradox, no harm, no foul plan, but try and slow things down just a little bit. Let them breathe for a second before you try and choke them down that quickly. But hey, it's completely fine. It's completely dandy. The tripwire though, on towards the side of mid. And it's going to be the side of Team Alpha going in for that push. It's going to be Black Hawk taking the take to the forehead once again. Skyward wants to go in for that spray, but it's such a dangerous position there, my man. He gets tagged down by Paradox with the Spectre. Yeah, not even a Phantom, ladies and gentlemen, it's a Spectre, but Knight Rider is going to be the one to put a shutdown down onto that back end. Oaks is going to be the one to take down Black Hawk as well. And with that, it is a 3 versus 4 situation. The plant has gone down, though, so this is a very hard retake in general. You don't know what this is! Jopra, are you serious? He just sits around the corner and gets a kill on the Knight Rider. 2 versus 3 situation, 2 players are very low, Sai's going to be good for 1 kill. Badman's not going to be able to take that one out, but hey, Sai's got you covered, don't really worry about it. He's a silver main. He's gonna make sure he gets the round for you guys. That's gonna be another round of the board for the set of team alpha. Uh, Sova main, KO main, he's pretty much anything Get and everything. You can, yeah, you can Get fit him into any role. Yeah, you can fit Sai into any role and he will do it justice. He's had his ups and downs, but you know, when he's on his up, it's pretty difficult to stop him. Right now, it looks like team alpha are getting uh, the benefits of uh, Sai being on his, one of his up days, and as well as Paradox, because, well, clearly, they have got the lead. Three rounds, and now they're going towards C, where Hydro Flake, yet again with this Marshall, is contesting, Spike and dance. again fights the head onto Blackhawk. I mean, I mean, I don't know if that's, a, if that's much of a Reyna diff coming on over here, but Blackhawk clearly isn't feeling that Reyna, is he? <laughs> Yeah, he's not feeling it that much, but at the same time, come on, it's Blackhawk. Give him a little bit of time, he'll adapt, he'll learn, and he's gonna be able to perform. Just a little bit dangerous, get the first initial tag, he's looking for another one, but Hydra Flick instead is gonna be the one to check out Paradox of Marshall and make so much dividends here, ladies and gentlemen. There's no one for Batman to run even. He's gonna get taken down with Sai with one side, it's a shot card on the other side, it's gonna be another one. But hey, you gotta be careful because Sai Rider has your phone number, he's gonna be calling you up, he's gonna be the one to try to take you back home. Roman is gonna be going for another one, but he's just not gonna be able to get his turn in time. The clutch comes out from the side of Rio. He sticks it down. He has the nerves of steel. He just does not care. Using his teammates like meat shields to get all the bullets on the side of Raman Chopra before he can go in for a swing there. That's kind of hurt, but at the same time, I do believe with the first initial round going in the favor of the side of Team Bravo, they're going to be quite happy because now the Operator is online for Knight Rider. As soon as he has that Operator here, Universe, you know how dangerous he can actually be. Oh yeah, he can be dangerous, but right now I don't think he's in the position to be dangerous way. because the A side is where Team Alpha are gonna look to hit. And uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a tricky matter because Paradox has got his knives out, gets one, looks for another, he's not gonna find it. Struggles with the knives, but he knows where the other player is and he knows that there's a jet as well. And Knight Rider, he makes success of that operator and all the players of the defensive side are here. But it doesn't even matter. Raman finds one. Raman looking for another. ADSing in the middle of a gunfight. Somehow finds one. But Hydra, he's only good for the one. His size swings around the side of the boxes and he finds that kill. And uh, yeah, that's another round for Al Team Alpha. I'm sorry, Team. Is that. Yeah, Team, team Alpha, yeah. But the thing about this round, look at how quickly the rotations came in. There were four. All four of the defenders were on the site over here, Aggressive. And. They still couldn't hold down this semi, I don't know, buy of whatever it was. I think only Paradox was the only one who did not buy him because of his knives, but it, Team Bravo are definitely struggling a bit over here. Yeah, they're just in a pretty bad situation in general. You would expect them to be a little bit more better, but that's not the case here. They're on the back foot. Knight Rider, he does have those knives, but he needs to find something with it. The Raynal here is going to force out his dash as well. 
And now, one more utility down the drain already, but Hydra Flick with his Marshall could be a difference maker. Does get the first initial tag, but Batman is gonna be good. And Paradox is gonna be an absolute menace! Yes, it's hurt kill. Hoax is gonna be the one to shut him on down, but Hoax is not My gonna be able to get that God. kill out to Blackhawk. Paradox, man. Paradox, Paradox. This that guy. Guy's game. Yeah, I do. It's, he, it's insane. Yeah, dude, he, this guy's been playing every single FPS game in this entire planet and he doesn't like you can see it his aim is cracked out in any way shape or form he's been tearing up the entirety of the gauntlet he's been tearing up our previous seasons as well and he's just been getting better and better and better that's paradox for you and now he's kind of bringing in a different level of pain for his opposition here in the all-star event. yeah now uh, now he's taking a little bit of a slow approach is night rider uh, sorry night rider as actually does not have the op this time, but he is aggressing along with his teammate towards A long, which gives them a lot of information. Is this gonna t stop the side of uh, Team Alpha though? Is the question because they've already taken over the B side. And Rio, although he got information about one player being here, Knight Rider needs to be careful. He spotted out, Sai's waiting around the corner and finds a jumping Knight Rider's life as the plan goes down. And Rio actually finds Roman, and this puts things into a little bit of a mix because there's no smokes available for either side. No, one side, but Paradox and Blackhawk are not gonna let this go on any further. Hydro Flick and Scargot, though, they find two, and they pull it back from a 4v2 to a 2v2. And now that Cosmic Divide is gonna help them, but the comes in Sai with the Hunter's Fury. He's looking for the kills. He needs to move in right now, Batman. He gets the kill. And now it's all up to Sai. He needs to run in. And he needs to run in right now. And he's going in with guns blazing. But Scar God just finds a better of him. And he's going to get the second run on the board. As the side of Bravo finally put up another response. Yeah, this was a really crucial round for them to win here. Bravo, if they didn't win this... They would have been in the ditch when it comes down to the terms of their economy. And even though they were able to win this round here, Universe, look at their eagle. They have nothing, pretty much nothing to work with whatsoever. A couple of them have to buy their half shields. A couple of them have to buy, uh, uh, have to buy just nothing almost to try and survive this round here. But for the side of Team Alpha, they're pretty much on the same boat. They also don't have a lot of money to work with, but at the same time, they have the momentum in their favor. So, yes, they lost out on one round, but it's not going to hurt them as much here because they are a team that should be able to make things work. But Blackhawk? He's just well, sending himself down run. towards the side of A Shore. Made like no sense. And now Hydra Flick, he's on a massive okay. alert. Feels going to be good for one kill. Sai's going to be the one to take that one out. But now, look at the positioning here. They should be able to get out of here. Hydra Flick, he needs to swing the corner. He needs to find a kill immediately. He's going to be able to find a bad man. The spike is in his favor. And now, they need to pick up that spike. Kind they know that Hydra Flick's in the back. If they don't start pushing for short, it's going to be over. But Hydra Flick's not going to get that away here, Universe. He's going to be able to do a lot. But Paradox and his flicks, man. The micro are just a little bit too clean from his part. It is, but Paradox needs to be oh. careful. Oh, that updraft actually helped him quite a bit. Well, now he knows where to plant. He does not know where Knight Rider is, though. But he knows he where Hoax is. Might, yeah. Paradox, on the corner, still not aware of anybody coming from long because there is nobody actually. Here's one, sees the other, now he knows both of them are here, goes for the spray down but only is able to find one as Hoax is going to make short work of him with that Spectre and it is going to be round number three for Bravo. Now we have a game on our hands now ladies and gentlemen, they're getting a little bit more eased into this game now Team Bravo and uh, I think that this just could be a little bit more of a uh, close affair than we thought it would be looking at the first few rounds. Yeah, it's getting closer and closer, but at the same time, man, you have to see how much of an impact Paradox is having over everyone here. He's just pushing down, guns blazing. He just does not care, and he's actually able to get so much done. And now it is going to be a semi by a possible people, I would say, because a couple of them do have over 1400 credits. So even way. if they lose out here in this round in particular, they do have lost streak bonus in their favor to make things work out at the same time. The shots are going to be going for Night Rider with a collateral. He's going to be able to take down two. Night Rider is going to be activated, ladies and gentlemen. And he's going to be shutting everyone down. Scott Rock swims around the corner as well. And the two buddies are going to be the ones to hold down the entirety of the season side beautifully to their end. And I with just, that, I'm guessing it was. 
I just feel so bad for Blackhawk because he's he's getting bullied as the Reyna. He I don't even think he realized. I think he was looking towards window when Paradox came up to look towards C. I think that's what was happening, and the poor man gets caught in between a collateral, and he's just like, wait, what? I just, uh, I just, feel, I just feel so bad for game. him. He's just having a pretty bad game. It's an unfortunate game for him. There's not much you can do about it. It happens from time to time. Like, you don't expect to die out at that angle, but hey, you just die suddenly. And I think that's gonna happen again. Yeah, yeah Blackhawk. Gotta be a little bit more careful, my friend. Paradox um... struggles to find the spray, but actually does get it. Batman goes through the smoke up to the A-Link position where he's got two players waiting for him. And oh, Nightbreak is just right so... Bloody good with that operator. Finds him. Easy peasy. Hydro flick on the backstab. Comes in and gets another kill. And they're just playing around at this point. Rio finds one. He knows where Sai is as well. He's been tagged down to 24 HP. And the camera is constantly spotting him out. And there's nothing he can do about it. Knight Rider co comes and gets him. As the side of Bravo have now drawn up level terms. And I love it. Hydra Flick and Knight Rider, the two duelists are combining their powers, even though it's on different parts of the map, and they're doing so very well. It's just a little bit of an interesting affair, I would say, between both of the sides, because... Yeah, it was a little bit of a scuffed spray right at the very beginning, coming down through from Scargon and Paradox, but we don't talk about it. We talk a little bit more about the rounds in the prior rounds forward from that. Because when it came down to the late rounds, it was a really good showing from the side of Hydra Flake. He was able to push himself up so beautifully, but Paradox is just like, yeah, Hydra, I know for a fact that you got the last round. I know for a fact that you have the but hey, I'm not going to be letting you have all the fun. Not just yet, but Knight Rider, he's looking for a couple of bits of his own, but Paradox should be able to go in for his engagement as yeah. well. He's holding him from down from the long side lights, and it was to actually take out Hoax to burial levels of HP. Paradox is right around the corner, maybe he can go in for one kill, and he's just not going to be able to find that Scargon with a Scarping is going to be able to survive. And now it's all up to Blackhawk, but... He's just not going to be having a good day here. Scarlet jiggles around the corner, free fires that angle, and takes Blackhawk back home. Last Six and five on the scorecard, ladies and gentlemen. And the side of Team Bravo here, Universe, have won five consecutive rounds. It was a one and five before, and now it's six and five. Woo! Bravo! They gave us a bit of a scare in the first few rounds, but hey, they've come back and they've put up... Uh... The lead, 65. The half is now secured from their end, at least in terms of getting it level. Now Alpha, they need to pull out something or else they're going to be on the lagging end of this half. 75. It's okay, though, on the attacking side of uh, Haven. 75 is not too bad considering all things that go down. Now Hoax is going to get some pressure on him. He's called for the rotation and you can see how quickly it's coming. And look at the backstab as well. Knight Rider and Hydra both coming in and Hoax has to defend this for as long as he can so that his teammates can get success on the backstab. He gets one. He's looking for another but he's not gonna find it. Paradox gets one and there's a lot of trades going back and forth. And now Alpha, they're trying to hold on to their ground and looks like they're doing pretty well as they've left Knight Rider all alone against them to do it with the knives in his hands. Not too much HP to work with. He finds one, Knight Rider dashes in straight. He goes for more. He knows that Paradox is a little bit low and he gets his key. Knight Rider, 1v3, made it down to a 1v1, he finds Raman's position, now he needs to spray him down and he will! Oh, Knight Rider! Pulls up round number 7, a beautiful 1v3 by the Jet main himself and this is exactly why you should be believing that Jet no matter how Switching much she side. got nerfed, is still one of the best agents on the ga in the game. Yeah, especially when it's in the hands of a player like Knight Rider, who can utilize the jet skills to the best of its ability, even though her abilities are now a lot more limited. If you're able to get the full value out of it, she's just as good as she was previously, if not even better, because you need to remember something. Previously, you would be a lot more reckless with jet. You would just dash into side. You had a lot of utility to work out with. And sometimes you would die out in the process because of your confidence. But now that Jet is a lot more limited, she's a lot more conservative. 
you have to think about it a lot more. You need to play your cards properly and you cannot make a lot more mistakes. And in a way, this time the slow methodical playstyle for Jet could indirectly buffer as well. And that's the buff that you're going to be expecting here from the side of Knight Rider, who lives and thrives off of being able to be aggressive but be slow at the same time. Man, I think I cursed him, man. I think I cursed him, man. I was saying that, yeah, Knight Rider is going to play it a little bit slow, a little bit more passive, but no, it's just not going to happen. Hydroflex is going to get slapped to the forehead as well with a classic. Sai is going to be able to take down Rio. But yeah, I think it's done dust it. There's not much that they can do here. Yeah, there's nothing they can do. A flawless pistol coming in from the side of Team Alpha as they completely decimate Bravo. And especially in Paradox, dude, I don't know what this guy eats, but his aim is godly. I don't know what he's on. What is his training routine? Is he spending like three hours on aim labs or what the hell this guy's doing? But clearly, it works out for him, and he's one of the top tier players there is. And that look at that, 22 kills. He's ahead by 8 kills anybody on the server, from anybody on the server. Knight Rider is the next, and he too is a jet. Not surprising at all. And now, Knight Rider, he's looking for more with this martial office as he spotted out Psy. And uh, they're exchanging a few bullets with Paradox oh, is the one who's going to get the better of it. Oh, Paradox! Uh, wait, Whoa. what? Through the oh, wall, man. Okay. With, with the ghost of all things. He got that kill with a ghost. Somebody oh, stop this guy. Somebody, yeah, somebody no stop one. this guy. I think Nitro is the one that's over here. here. If, if, he, if he had hit that shot with the Marshall midair onto Hydro Flick, I think I would have, I think I would have, you know, stopped playing Valorant. I this guy I think just... he would have walked away from the caster's desk and he would have left me alone. Look at this, look at this. He just, I don't know how he got that Oh my god, look at that, man. Hoax? Poor guy was just walking across that door. And he got shot through the wall without even expecting it. How thin is that wall, dude? Ghost just penetrates through it. And he gets the kill so easily. Paradox. What a guy, dude. Somebody just, oh my god, stop him. He's already on 25. It's just getting better and better, and Sai's gonna be able to take down Knight Rider. There's no entry anymore down towards the A side, and it feels like they're using their utility a little bit too, a uh, little bit too sparingly. They need to try and play it a lot more slower when they're trying to go in for a lot of these different engagements. If this is the level of gameplay that the side of Team Alpha are employing, it's gonna get difficult, especially now that it's gonna be the first initial buy on it. It's gonna be a rotation call coming on down almost immediately because they know there are three players holding on down towards that A site. So now it's time to put them down over to C. Time to see if they can find a pick here. Time to see if they can find an avenue. But Hoax, he knows. He knows that there's an alarm bot here. They cannot go in for this swing. It's gonna be dangerous. The alarm bot has been taken out at the bare minimum. Scarbot's making the push happen as well, but they can't go in. The C site's also covered by the killjoy. Batman has a set of Batman knows what to do here. He knows what to expect. And this is an execution is gonna happen, but I do believe that with the 5 versus 4 retake on the cards, they can easily go in for the stake. They have the utility, they have the avenues, they use absolutely nothing in the previous couple of rounds other than Batman trying to hold off a push here. They can go in for this, this should be easy for them. One enemy remaining. It should be, but it's not! Alpha! It's not easy, at no least for Bravo. Yeah. Alpha's got three players alive. Hoax looking for the clutch. 1v3 the same way that Knight Rider pulled it off, but it's not gonna happen. As Blackhawk takes him down. He was distracted, trying to shoot somebody else, but Blackhawk swings out wide and gets his kill. And it is the side of Team Alpha to put up eight. As they take three rounds in a row, and they've established their lead back in. And now, the side of Bravo have put the side of... Uh, Alpha in a position where they can find themselves very comfortable. I love that, you know, Bravo are going in for these kind of, uh, you know, interesting picks. Uh, they went towards C, they got what they needed, but it's just not enough in the end. Because when you got a team like uh, Alpha, which have all the utility left on them, they can cause a lot of havoc as they did. And now they have operators in the hands of the most dangerous players. One of them being Paradox. He misses the shot, though. It was a jiggle, so I'll let him survive that because, well, it is a pretty difficult shot to hit. Now he's been smoked off as well, so he needs he needs to reposition. Ooh, Sai. Sai. He's going up a little towards... Oh, look at this. The crossfire between two opponents is really, really real. Oh, that camera's not going to spot him out, and he takes it back. 
And he's not gonna check this. And Hoax ends his life, giving it to Sai. And he takes down his twin brother as well. As Sai gets a 2k and he's gonna secure the A side for his team. And they don't need to worry about it anymore because the side of Bravo are now in a very confused state. And they're being pushed back so much now that Pedro Flick has to play from his spawn. And he's not even allowed to peek onto Sai because he just sprays him through the boxes. That's got a little bit sus right there. Hydra Flick was just going for those jiggles. He just wanted to get that kill, but Sai was not going to be giving anything away. Sometimes he was standing up, sometimes he was sitting down. There's nothing that you can do there. Blackhawk also activated himself. Got himself a couple of kills at the bare minimum, get himself onto that board and make him feel a little bit more useful, I would say, because Blackhawk's been having a pretty bad game here, and I don't blame him. If you get killed because you were trying to swing around the corner and trying to check your teammates' window angle whenever he was speaking from the side of c -Bong. Yeah, that's gonna hurt you. You can just got Operator Collateral there. But hey, completely fine because now Sai's gonna be the one to go in for the Hunter's Fury. He's gonna be able to get the first initial two tags at the bare minimum. The positions are just not gonna be good and Paradox! He goes in for another kill. He's looking for a couple of more. He's not gonna be able to find it though. Nitro is just gonna be able to survive. Robert Chopra is gonna be the one to get taken out. Nitro is gonna get a second. And Paradox, it's all up to him. He needs to be the difference maker. Yes, he's gonna be the one to take down Nitro in a two versus two situation on the map. The knives have been pulled out as well. They know for a fact that Rio's at one HP. Scargo's the one who needs to try and open up a lot of these you different want to avenues. Fight it. The ultimate has been popped. The positions are just gonna be good. Paradox, he's just gonna push across. Rio doesn't know. He's not gonna expect it. He's remaining. gonna get taken down as well. Spike the spikes in the hands of Paradox now. And Scargod needs to be the one to go in for an entry. He needs to be the one to make a difference here. Get spotted out by Paradox. Just a little bit too little too good here. He spins around the corner with his knife straight to the face of Scargod. Takes him out. 7 to 10 on the scorecard as well for Universe. And I honestly do believe that Team Alpha could just take it all away here. I mean, I have to probably say the same with the way that Paradox has been performing. I think he's taken this game a little bit seriously <laughs> than what we would expect. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah, you know, it, it's not too much. You know, 30 kills. Yeah, that's okay. Ooh, I mean, 30 kills in just 16 rounds. Yeah, that, that's normal. That's just not that just a little bit way. serious. And uh, yeah, of course, nobody pays attention to him because he's almost double of anybody in the server except for Sai. Yeah, now... Hydra Flick, again on that Marshall. How many rounds in a row have you seen it? But the side of exactly Bravo have actually pulled us out of the bag as they've got the kills that they needed. Spike Three have come mid. in. And now Paradox needs to be the hero. He finds one and they don't want to contest him over here as they go back. Badman might just find out the rotations Batman. over here. Knight Rider, he gets spammed in the back. Almost actually turns around to get the kill, but now they've pulled it down to a 2v2. And Badman, he hears oh, one. No, Rio. He sees another, he's not gonna get the kill. Rio actually takes him out. Paradox, eats a shock dart. And there's a lot of... No, oh, that's Bam. Almost survives it. Hoax was gonna return the favor what he gave him. Paradox, a couple of rounds ago with the ghost of all the things. But he couldn't finish off the kill. And now with 8 HP and with everything but health working in his favor. He needs to pull out a 1v2 clutch. I mean, he doesn't really need to. He's got not money. Yet. His team has money for days. He can choose to, I mean, save if he wants to, but or go in for the clutch. But he's 8 HP, so he needs to pull off something, and he needs to pull off something right now because both of these players have pulled up a um, doozy on him as they've gone both towards the ailing position, and he's caring about every single angle there is, and nobody's going to peek out from there. You've been spotted, Paradox. And you're going to be taken down just any second now unless you run away. There it is. He just wants to save this operator. He wants to get away for his own safety. And a round finally coming in the hands of Team Bravo after five were pulled out by Alpha and Aggressive. This, I mean, as much of a dominance came in, it, it still looks like, you know, you look at the entire ma match so far, it looked like it was Team Bravo who were, sorry, Team Alpha who were actually the dominant side, right? They were so aggressive, mm -hmm. they were up in front. But still, the scoreline doesn't actually translate that so well. 8 to 10 is pretty good scoreline, considering all things, right? Yeah, it's a really good scoreline. 8 and 10, you would think that it's a really close affair. And then you press the tab button, and then you go to the scoreboard. 31 and 12, rest yeah. of the 17 and 14.
This guy has the exact same kills as two players combined. Now he's not gonna have the exact same kills as two players combined from the side. Bravo, but still, hey. Knight Rider, he's gonna be making things work. He takes on Blackhawk and... You gotta feel bad for Blackhawk, man. This guy's been not having a good day at all. He swings around a corner, there's an operator waiting for him. He swings around another corner, he gets oh, operator no. collateral. And now Batman's also having a bad day, but Hydroflex having an amazing day. He's gonna be able to take down two players, and now Sai. He's gonna need to be the one to take a backseat here as well. Robin Chopra right around the corner. He needs to be the savior of this round. If he's able to get two kills, it's gonna help. A Knight Rider just swings around the corner hard and takes him down. One more player remaining. Paradox is not gonna be able to hit that shot there. Wait, Hydroflex is gonna be the one to save him out. Yeah, I so thought that shot that. connected. No, I thought that shot connected. Dude, he's gonna go down. The Hydro Flick gets a third of the run, and he's actually the hero. The it actually I hits just, a pillar I on just, the side, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, I just want to have a look because I think he was tucked into that wall, and after you know he was just tucked down there. I think Paradox hit him through the. At least it should have hit him through the wall because. Oh, I think. Oh, wait, let's let's have a look. Wait, let's see, let's see, let's see. Look, yeah, look at that! Overflick, he overflicked it. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, probably, yeah. Fair if he was standing still, I do believe that he would have died. Hydroflick would have died if he was standing, uh, standing completely upright instead of crouching. <sighs> yeah. This time, they're going up a little bit aggressive again, Team Alpha. Not finding any success, though. Hydroflick. He has to be the hero yet again. He's the one who's been finding out these uh, avenues for them to work with, and he needs to probably find another one towards this. Okay, that smoke. Interesting it's smoke. Roman. Interesting smoke, yeah, indeed. Yeah, it's uh, gonna not hurt anybody, but Sai almost eats a bullet from Knight Rider's operator. As Hoax moves in towards A, gives out his position, and Batman. He's undeterred about it. He knows that there's somebody towards uh, Elon, but he just wants to play along with his utility. He knows that he needs to get back to safety, and that's what he's gonna do. Retake, always better, because he's got his ultimate, which he might just drop any second now, but the thing about that is, there is an ultimate waiting to take him out, and there it is, it's gonna come out. Here comes the Hunter's Fury. It's gonna take down the lockdown, and even tag up one of them, I believe. No, it's not, but Blackhawk, he actually gets a kill. Now the side of Alpha have got the advantage, which has immediately been taken out by Knight Rider. He that takes down two, Hope finds two of his own, and just like that, Paradox again left all alone. Yeah, this time around, Paradox just going for the save, man. You just can't. On one side there's Rio, on one side there's another. Where does he go? Gives the way to run. Paradox with the Operator battle, but right at the very end, Hope is gonna be there to go in for that trade. Paradox, he's trying his hardest, but they're circumventing Paradox so beautifully here. The main thing that we need to highlight here, Universe, is the way that Team Alpha, sorry, Team Bravo, are playing around the positioning of Paradox. As soon as they spot out Paradox, they immediately go towards the other side, and Paradox is now left in dilemma. Where does he go? He cannot go inside of the side. He cannot be the one to help his teammates deny the entry, because they're fast rushing as soon as they know that Paradox is not there. This is the best possible thing that the side of Bravo can do here. They need to stay away from Paradox. He's having an amazing day, yes. But how do you counteract it? Just avoid it. Just go towards the other side and take the fights against his teammates, which you know for a fact they can win against. In this situation, Bravo is doing exactly that. We are doing that. And now this drone could give a little bit of position to the Blackhawk. Uh, and uh, he runs back immediately. As Batman, unfortunately, has to destroy the recon to save himself, but he's not to be able to get the kill. Hydro Flick finds Blackhawk as well. And now Team Bravo look like they're imminent to take the lead over here, Aggressive. And it's not looking too good for Alpha. Paradox on the backstab. Okay, yeah, okay. Let's, 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 just, let's just forget about that. It happens, it happens. He hit a it's lot okay. of good shots that. He hit a lot of good shots. Yeah, he but... did. He he hit a, he, he hit some Stop. great shots, but it's okay. Happens uh, to the best of Whoa, us. Whoa, okay. Sai, though, not gonna let himself go down as yet. Yeah, one tap! It was you or me. Gargar eats something that he usually gives people. Right here. And right here. Uh, that's gonna give him a little bit of a uh, nostalgic moment as to how he treats people with his one taps when he's got that Reaver Randall in his hands. Uh, yeah. It doesn't really matter because the side of Team Bravo have got round number 11 and they've got the lead back. It's going back and forth. It's gone back and forth so far. And like we talked about it earlier, Aggressive, 
this could be a match that would be really up and close or it could be one-sided and it looks like it's gonna be as up and close as it gets yeah it really does depend on the ideologies of both of these teams who's gonna be playing it better who's gonna be playing it stronger now position's good from both of the teams paradox he needs to be the one to try and push everything down here but no one's pushing him Everyone's on the other sidelines. It is going to be Alkanen being caught from the side side. He's going to be able to take down Skargar. Beautiful Hunter's Fury. Being able to use it blindly and get a little bit of information and also clear out the Astra. And now, without the Astra, it's just going to get even more difficult. How do they opt to go in for an execution now? They don't have smokes. And without any form of a smoke or any form of a pull or a stun from Astra, this execution is going to get even more difficult. And this could just be the first round that the side of Team Alpha need to get the ball rolling on their court once again. But Paradox, he's going to get spotted out. I don't think they're going to go in for that push. If they do, they're absolutely bonkers. Yeah, they should know better than to go towards the direction where Paradox is sitting. And it looks like they're doing exactly the opposite. They don't want to go where Paradox is sitting. And that's a good decision. And now they've got Roman waiting on this end. He gets put it on and he gets no kills. Hydroflake is feeling it towards the end of this game. He's been trying to help out his left. team from the very beginning. Five and now Blackhawk's oh, Black okay. He just finds one, takes on the heel. As Batman took care of Hoax and Hydroflake goes down as well. Rio, the last man left on the back side, finds one hit, looks for another, but his Phantom just does not have the power that Blackhawks does. And he's gonna find his head as Alpha responds back after giving away a couple of rounds. And it is 11 to 11 scoreline. We're going to the deep end now, ladies and gentlemen. This could be an overtime. We don't know just yet, though. Let's see what we can expect coming on down through from these teams. Because from what we have seen previously, any one of these teams, if they get a little bit of momentum in their favor, things are gonna be looking up for them. This time around, I would say that Bravo, they did a really good job of trying to circumvent the positions of Paradox and try to play away from him. But I personally do believe that they overthought the situation a little bit too much. Without Scar God, seemingly not having a smoke affected them a lot. So if this is the thing that is required to break them down here, things aren't going to be good. But the night Operator battle is going to be present! And it's going to be Knight Rider against that person to win! The Knight Rider with a quick is going to be able to take down Sai as well! Knight Rider, he's gonna be the opening fragger, he's gonna be the opening killer, and he's gonna be a cold blooded one as well. 11 and 11 of the scorecards, 3 versus 5 situation on the map. It's one more round away from match point, ladies and gentlemen. One more round to bring everything back in the favor of Team Bravo and also Team Alpha. Who's gonna be winning this one out? All of the signs point towards the side of Bravo. And they're just gonna make things happen here. Yeah, Scargod gets uh, the reverse frag down on the Batman, sending it down on the two versus four. Scargod gets another one on the Blackhawk as well. It's all up to Roman Jones to try and pluck something out here. But Scargod is not gonna be even letting that happen. The two right best there. friends right from the side right of Team Bravo make it all work out here, Universe. And I honestly do believe with the momentum in the favor of the side of Team Bravo, I don't think that Team Alpha, they can do anything here, especially with the buys that they do have. Yeah, I don't expect anything to happen as well. I think this should be probably the end of this uh, first map of Haven. As we can see, Paradox has been uh, nerfed down to a Marshall. And he's going towards Sea Long with Batman for another aggressive push, I believe. And he's going to get ambushed. But he actually gets one kill. And another. Paradox making things. Paradox! No way he's doing this. Scargar finally puts an end to his tantrums as Bravo have gone down by three men and now they've been caught out. Make that another one. Blackhawk finds Scargar trying to look for the backstab and Hoax is left all alone to do it all. He knows that Blackhawk's around here. He finds his kill. Down on half HP. Hoax, he just walks. Okay, yeah. Dude, nerves of steel. He just walks. He doesn't even pull out his gun. He, he, he knows he doesn't even need to. What the hell is this guy made of? Yeah, clearly. Hoax, 1v2 now. He's got one tripwire to work with, and he's running towards A. His camera's gonna be on any second now. And he's got both the players that he's facing off against come in on a backstab. While he is taking a plant towards their side, unaware of the fact Spike that they planted. could be coming that way. And he's moving towards shot himself. He should be hearing all of these sound cues, and I think he knows that both these players are coming in from a long. He definitely does. He just needs to find a better timing on them. But I don't think short is the best position to do that, because they're going to expect him being over here. 
One of them is taking the defuse, and that's Roman. And he finds a kill, and now it's just Psy left alone. Hoax oh. needs to make this work. It's half HP. He knows that he's not defusing, and he's playing around with the spoon. It's not going to be his day, though, as Hoax tries his best, but it's going to be overtime, ladies and gentlemen. Team Alpha, take us all the way. I honestly thought it's not going to be working out. I honestly thought it's going to be already over, done, and dusted. Switching and hey, guys. Sai, he's over laughing, time. he's grinning, he's telling us that, hey, don't worry about it, ladies and gentlemen. I know we don't have the player camps available, but I'm like this in real life right now. He was giggling, he was laughing. That was a really good clutch and paradox. I don't know how he's able to pull off rabbits out of his hat, out of nowhere, pretty much. The miracles are being done every single time by this man. And I think that he didn't like the sentence that you put in on before here, Universe. Being nerfed down to a martial Nama. I'm being nerfed down to the Jet Knights. The Jet Knights whose left clicks are just as deadly if you hit the head. And he didn't miss a single one there. Paradox. He is the difference maker for all of these. Knight Rider, he's been pulling up a lot of incredible stunts as well. He's going to be the one that you look to to try and take out Paradox. But it's just not happening. Not every single time here. It's gonna be even more dangerous! Knight Rider is still on the shot against Paradox, and Paradox is gonna be able to survive. He can still go in for a push, but he doesn't have a dash anymore, oh and God, so does yeah. a Knight Rider. So all these engagements are a lot more crucial, a lot more deadlier, and a lot more methodical as well. But with the A side push imminent here, Universe, anything could happen. Could happen. It's gonna be a 5v5 brawl over here. Fires go in both sides. It's gonna be the team that is Bravo who have the advantage, but it's taken out by Sai. He's left alone. That shock down is gonna hit. Oh my god. It's a battle of the Sovas. Both of them are pretty much three bullets away from oh, no, death. But it's gonna be Rio who finds the timing on the side immediately goes towards the defender side spawn door and he's gonna find the Magic opening turn. that he needs Sai is still concentrating upon that heaven position gives away his life unfortunately did not expect Rio to come back down and as a result team alpha they have given away another round it might just be the last one unless they pull up something over here it has to be paradox and it has to be that man to do it yet again 37 kills is that 37 yeah it is 37 right yeah 37 kills in 24 rounds i mean I, I, oh my he god paradox it. he had yeah he does knight rider now needs to be a little careful because he cannot make jumps like those again scar god although he finds one blackhawk has been caught off guard he's gonna be discovered pretty easily because of his flash being down so low towards the mid side area and now team alpha They've lost two players already. It could be the round as well over here, Gracive. As they move in towards A now, Bravo. Got a backstab in the form of Batman coming in. Oh, he spots one. He no gets the kill. Over. Rhea goes out. And now it's going to be Batman trying to run away because he needs cover. He's got Paradox over there with him. Scargod has already made his way towards the A side as Night Raider is actually taking control of C. And this is very weird right now. I think Night Raider is trying to sell a fake. And he's successful in it because all players of Alpha have made their way over here. And the plan is going to go down any second as a retake is imminent. It's not much that you can do here. Boy, but surely the push is happening. But look at the defenders. They're going in for rotation. Play Scargod. Too aggressive, my man. Way too aggressive. He gets caught out of position. And now, Trader's on a very beautiful flank. Maybe he can pull off something here. But on 12 HP... I don't think it's gonna happen, Universe. One straight bullet and he's already dead. Even through a wall, he's gonna be dead. And Paradox, you should know what's up! Knight Rider knows. He's gonna get one kill, but Paradox is gonna swing around the corner and take him out. That's gonna be overtime number one, ladies and gentlemen. Down and dusted and overtime number two. Here we come, because now, both of these teams, they know what to expect. They know what the opposition is doing. And I didn't expect this to be this close, to go into overtime on Haven. That's not something that you see every day. Most certainly aggressive. You don't see it, and especially when you got teams shuffled up like this, it, you know, always somehow ends up being a, uh, you know, one-sided affair. It's not one-sided, at least like a 13 to 9, 13 to 10 scoreline, but right now, we've got 13 to 13. We got Knight Rider trying to increase that for his team towards C Long. He's pushing up aggressively, and look at this hold. Oh my god, they expect this. They know he's coming over here. And look at this ambush that Knight Rider is going to be walking oh, into. Knight Rider is He even gets away. 
48 HP and he makes his way. That's all he needs. Oh, Scott 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 fights another Night Rider, adds on to his kill tally. As Alpha are completely torn apart, limb by limb. Sai, he's gonna be able to find Hydro Flick, but that's about it. And now he's looking for the more. He's got oh. Rio. Yes, he does. Oh, Rio's oh, number oh, has oh, been oh, called oh, in. Oh, Knight Rider, he gets one, but he's immediately taken out by Sai. Oh. It's an exchange of the boat, the killers over here. That shock dart, a little delayed, but just enough. Roman, he gets the kill, and now in a 1v1, Hoax is left to do it all, coming in from the A side. He's on the flank, and Roman needs to be careful of this, because he's running in the same direction, and they're gonna hear oh, each no, other he over knows. here. Hoax no, knows. No. Roman's dead. Roman's dead. He doesn't know. He shouldn't expect it. Yep, he's just gone. Hoax is gonna be the first one to go in for that fight, and Roman just gets caught off guard in universe. That's gonna be a sad story, but you have to say at the same time that Sai, he set up the round beautifully for Roman. Roman also got that kill down on the Scar God, but what sound being made, unfortunate for his end. He's just not gonna be able to find that clutch, and it's gonna be another round on the board for overtime number two, Switching ladies sides. and gentlemen. Who in the favor of Sai? Oh. Yeah, I mean, this round, Night Rider, I don't know what that guy's on, dude, but he's been on a roll for the last couple of rounds. That Operator is just singing and singing and singing for him, and he's making good use of it. To be honest, I, I think Hydroflix kind of gone quiet in the last couple of rounds, right? He had such a good impact in the second half, but he's, it's just been a little bit more quieter now. Hope he gets something out of this round because his team is gonna need it to win out this one. 14 to 13. Still 5v5. Paradox holding down A. He's cleared out the entire side for his teammates. Now he's got somebody coming up in his oh. crosshair. Oaks throws down the cage. And he's just gonna be surviving for a bit. Badman holding down the garage in his usual position. Paradox has been spotted out. It's getting a little cheeky over here. Hydroflake finally comes alive and he gets the first kill. Raman goes down. And he's looking for more. Throws in the flash. Gives out a little bit of a fake, I believe, towards B. As the Seaside has been taken control of over here, Aggressive. Because the protector over there has gone down. Sai, he finds Knight Rider through the smoke. And another one. Gargod goes down. And now Rio needs to find Batman. Oh, he's trying. He's trying to go over, oh, he but he's not gonna get it. Sai actually finds a third, and now he's the only one trying to make things work for his team. As he pulls it down to a 2v2, one-man army left. fight going on over here. As they need Paradox to do something. He's just holding down the angle. He you doesn't know, need to do it. anything more. He misses the shot, Paradox. Uncharacteristic of him at these stages of the games. Sai has been spotted out. They know where Paradox is as well. And Rio is pushing up because he knows that Sai is not going to be coming here. He's going towards C Long. And Rio Paradox. has to jump on him. Yeah, he doesn't know. Paradox, goodbye. Oh, See you later. Remember. See you in the next dimension. Because now it's going to be our turn to close everything out. Hunt this fury get popped as well. Sai, he's going to have all of the information in the entire world. He knows exactly where the players are, but the positions are not, not that good. Hulk swings around the corner, takes bounce. Sai, puts him into a package, and sends him back home. With that, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be the side of Team Bravo through the thickest of the thins, through the most intense fights that they could possibly we have finally bring back everything in their favor to take down their opposition here and universe i didn't expect any of this i thought that team alpha were going to be the ones to win everything they had such a dominant performance paradox going over to 38 frags and everything i don't know dude that like how why what happened how did they break down like this i don't know they were they were just absolutely insane sigh and Paradox completely tore through uh, the side of uh, Bravo, but it just wasn't enough. Bravo, they came out on top, and we're going to have to see in the match highlights, ladies and gentlemen, to see how exactly they turned around, because Paradox and Sai might have been the showstoppers today, but it was a team effort coming in from the side of Team Bravo. Uh, you know, they had everybody performing, Rio, Hoax, uh, Hydra, Scargot, and Knight Rider. Knight Rider, though, he was the one guy who was giving the competition to both Psy and Paradox on the opponent's side. But 
Hey, they, they did their best, I believe, Alpha. They had yeah. control. They had a lot of uh, map control. They had a lot of, you know, aggressive pushes that worked in their way in the early stages of the uh, game as well. In the first half, though, I thought this was going to be a landslide victory for them. But then Bravo came back. They brought it back 5-5. to five. They took 7-5. to five. Then they gave up the lead 10-7. to seven. Then they brought it back 10-10. to 10. It went 11-11, to 12-12. to 12. And then we, here we are. We are at God's 15. Odd. Yeah. 15 to 13, and the side of Bravo have just outed the side of Alpha in a really good way. In a teamwork all around, they've done a really good job. Knight Rider, though, his operator shots, I think, were, you know, the steal of the show for them. Because if it wasn't for him, I think they wouldn't have had a chance against Team Alpha. Yeah, uh, it's just... Not something that you would expect here, especially because Team Alpha, they were the ones who should have won out everything here. They had the advantages. It felt like the strategy was there, but Team Bravo, they just adapted so beautifully. They were so good on the on-the-fly adaptations that Team Alpha, their pre planned strategies never really worked out. It felt like Team Alpha, they were relying so much on their post-gun fights and not their mid-round or the late-round calls that this costed them pretty much everything here. Paradox was able to pull off something incredible, yeah, but... That was due to his raw aim, not due to the calls and the strategies, and they just got hurt way too much here, way too often. So in a way, I guess it was a bad round. In that map in general for a couple of these teams, Blackhawk didn't really have the best of showings. He could have done so much more better. But at the same time, they did play their cards, probably have to say at the very least. Team Bravo, Team Alpha, both of them played their cards well, but right at the very end, Team Bravo and their adaptability was the thing that won them out in so many of their different engagements in the universe. And moving on down the line, as we head on down over on Dubai, do you think that this could be a telltale sign of what's going to happen? Because we know for a fact that Blackhawk, he is a race player and he could just be picking up that race on Vine and so will Hydroflip. Yeah, we can see a lot of explosive race plays come in on Vine and it's, it's definitely going to be a little bit more of a, uh, I think, you know, uh, explosive affair over there because it's more compact, it's more dynamic. We got teleporters, we got a lot of different avenues to explore. It's going to be a double controller meta. I don't know what these guys are going to go for. I really hope they turn it up. Give us viewers a little bit of a uh, fun moment. Go on, pick that Yoru, pick that KO, go for the breach, whatever it is that you feel like, go for it. Just get that W, no matter how it is. But hey, for now, though, it's uh, the side of um, Bravo who have taken in the first win. And they're going to be going in this best of three with their head held high and the foot already in the final. One foot at least. As yep. uh, We're going to have to see how exactly it turns out on buying aggressive because I think that both of these teams... They've given us a showcase of what their skills are in the long term, and that's where exactly where we see uh, we saw a overtime come in. Are we going to see that in Bayern is a question, as you and I are going to take a small break. And don't go anywhere, guys. We're going to be back in a few minutes as we see whether or not Sai and his team can make a comeback.
Hey, South Asia Valorant players, I'm Sean Garris. It's Kusta. And Michael from Genji Valorant here with some really exciting news. We have teamed up with LG Ultra Gear and the Esports Club for Season 2 of The Gauntlet. The winner of TEC Gauntlet Season 2 will receive an exclusive one-on-one -on -one mentoring session with our Valorant team to help identify areas of improvement in their game to prepare for a higher level of gameplay. In addition to that, we're going to be reacting to some of the top plays throughout this competition. Guys, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so make sure you don't miss out on this. Good luck to everyone competing from everyone here at Gen.G Valorant. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the LGL Trigger TC Gauntlet All Stars event powered by WB Black and AMD Ryzen Radiant. We are back once again after a very intense match number one. I needed to get myself some water because honestly, not really what I expected to happen, but at the same time, I expected that as well to be a close affair at the very end of it, but not right at the very start. Because, universe, my brain hurts, man. Like, no one expected that to happen. So let's head on and over to the map beater screen and see what the score line was previously and what the next map is going to be as well because Team Bravo taking it on a 15 and 13. The teams were extremely fair here, Universe. This map number one being an overtime map, I'm really scared to see what's going to happen in that map too. Yeah, I'm really excited as well. It's definitely going to be, you know, um, I think it's going to be another nail-biting finish. I really wouldn't be surprised if we saw map 3 come in. But Bind, I think it somehow places the strengths of Bravo. Just because I know that Hydro Flick is really good on that raise. Uh, we've also got Knight Rider, who's probably going to be playing Brimstone, if all. If he goes for his usual picks that he does. And uh, we've got even Scar God, who can fit into any role possible. Maybe that Viper, if he wants to play. And yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. But Bind... I, I don't know why, I just feel like Bravo might have a much more easier time than they did on Haven, and they could probably take this 2-0. Yeah, Bind is a map where it's a lot more puggish, less reliant on strategy, I would say, and more reliant on your raw gun fight capabilities with fast rushes and execution-heavy compositions. If you have a set strategy and if you're able to exec execute it properly down towards that B-side, it's pretty simple enough to push yourself down over to a sideline, get control of it, and then just not have to worry about anything else. But 
The thing is, after what we saw on the map of Haven, they do rely a lot more on strategy, especially from the side of Team Bravo, who are a lot more slower, a little bit more tactical, and then they opt to go in for a couple of different executions. But for the side of Team Alpha, they are a little bit more different. They like to switch it up a lot more. They like to be a lot more aggressive, a lot more in your face. So in a way, Vine should be favoring them, but I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe yes. Let's just see what we can expect here coming on moving on down the line. Because find I don't know here, universe. A map where Jet is really strong, a map where Raze is really strong, possibly Arena as well could be really potent. But with the double initiators and double controllers on the cards, which team do you think could just pick up a double controller setup? Because Viper and Brimstone on this map in particular. Even with all the changes that happened previously, are should be still very potent, especially with the gen nerfs as well. Yeah, I have to agree. It has to be, you know, a more. I think this this is a map where oh, you KO really. Dude. Okay, dude. Like I forgot about the KO buffs. KO's flashes are actually incredible now, so I could pick it up. Yes, I could pick it up, and we can see a lot of different plays come in. Uh, I think that KO is probably not going to be chosen over here because that you know Sova is probably so going to be the go-to. Sova, Sky, just because they need a flashing element, I believe. I think Sky's flash is a lot more viable than KO's just because they're mobile and they're more, you know, flexible in order to use. It's more, uh, I would say, more team set up, more healthy. And also, given that Sky's, you know, the retaining ability for her to get her weapon back in her hands has been nerfed. You know, it's gone from 0 0.25 seconds to 0 0.75 seconds. Uh, it's it's a little bit of a nerf for sure for Sky, but she's still potent. She's still one of the best agents. And let's see who's gonna picking who's gonna pick up this uh, Sky or any other agent as we head in down towards the agent selections, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we got Sai this time on Jet. Oh, how long has it been since we Ooh. saw that? It's been a long time, man, and I'm really excited for this. It's been so long since we last seen Sai on Jet, especially in a tournament type setting. You've seen him on stream all the time. He sometimes picks up the silver from here and there, but primarily he picks up that jet. But now, on a tournament setting, I'm kind of excited to see it. Of what kind of game plans are you going to be bringing down to the table here? But from the side of X, uh, from the side of Team Alpha, sorry, they're just going to be chilling. They're just going to be vibing with that brimstone. Very common composition for the map of mine. Nothing really too fancy, nothing really too exciting. But side of Team Bravo. I think that we could be in for something exciting. A double initiator composition, no sentinel. This could be an interesting affair, but at the same time, universe, this could be a little bit of a one-sided show as well, because the defensive side of Team Bravo is actually quite weak, weak without any form of a sentinel. That is true. There is a little bit of a, a sentinel, uh, you know, uh, disparity between both of these teams. But the thing about this game in this map is that we sometimes don't see a Sentinel coming, right? We see a Viper and a Brimstone, we see a Sova and a Sky, and we see the single Jet, you know, or a Raze. But that depends on the team, and especially when it's more on the esports side of things, when it's more on the competitive basis. But this, although it's competitive, it's got a little bit of a, uh, you know, you know, a lot of different players playing in the same team. And that's exactly where they're playing with what they feel comfortable. We got Hydro Flake yet again on Arena. It's going to be actually Hoax to shift up from that Cypher to uh, Ray's Wall. And we've got Rio sticking up with that uh, uh, Sova as we got Night Rider on the Brimstone as expected and Scar God on the Sky. So we're going to have to wait and see how it all goes down, ladies and gentlemen. As Alpha look to put a comeback on in position over here. And it looks like they might just find an early lead because the backstep has come in and the B-side has already been exposed to being taken on over here. Blackhawk finds the kill onto Scar God and that's already Bravo falling on the back lines. Yeah, that's gonna hurt them already. First initial engagements are just so crucial and them not being able to find anything. It's gonna be bad. Blackhawk's not gonna hit those shots though. Nightmare is gonna be the one to get take out Batman. Another kill going down as well. Sai's gonna be good for one kill, but he's just not gonna be able to find the second. The plan's gonna get going down as well. Knight Rider's gonna be able to take down Paradox, and it's all up to Knight Rider and Rowan Chopra to make something off here. It's just not gonna happen. Knight Rider's gonna be the one to take down one more. Sai's gonna get taken out as well, but Knight Rider with a 4k. And I'm really worried here now, Universe. Consider something. Knight Rider on a Brimstone got a 4k. And how much 
Is he away from an orbital strike? Um, I think three? three. Yeah, three. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, one ultimate point, or maybe even two ultimate points, if he wants to make the long jog from shower over towards the side of the long. One more point off. This guy, as soon as he gets his orbital strike, yeah, I think that we're gonna be seeing a lot of crispy fried chickens just scattering all over the map. Crispy fried chickens. That's what's on the menu today. If Knight Rider is serving you, Hydro Flick again with the Marshal. This guy loves this weapon, doesn't he? Yep. He just loves the Marshal. Now he might just find a little bit of an extra kill. No, he tags him down really low. I think Hoax is less than 10 HP. Five? I don't know what the hell he's on, but he's not going to be picking anybody anytime soon. As the side of Bravo now make their way towards A short. They're going to be eating a little bit of damage with that grenade, Ooh, but Sai, he's probably going to find Rio. No, no he's not. Timing. He comes on the backstab. The timing goes against him, and it's going to be the plan to go down Spike as planted. the Paradox. 7 HP. Does not matter. He escapes. Hoax finds Blackhawk, though. And he's looking for more. Raman is going to be walking towards his death. He takes him down. Batman with the Sova this time of all agents is going to be trying to get a close range kill, a burst maybe, but nobody's going to try to challenge him unless Hoax goes in for it. He gets the kill and it's going to be Rio to take down the last one standing. Paradox with 7 HP. He's that shock dart and he's going to give away the round. It's okay though. It's just an eco and we expected this to happen as Bravo put up a flawless round and they're going to be going up ahead with weapons to save for a bonus that they are confident to win if they give in to you know a little bit of a strategic play really hope that they try and do something different and yeah it's been so good so far for bravo they've taken the momentum from the previous team and now they are going to be trying to defend this buy coming in they have a phantom of their own available in the hands of knight rider but not to forget Still a little bit of a weaponry disadvantage for them, given that they still have Spectres to play with. Hoax again, so low early in the round. And he's probably going to give away his life unless he gets healed. And there it is, the heal comes in. As Bravo are trying to read the waters right now, and it's a little bit against them. The current is just not working in their favor to let them flow down smoothly. Yeah, they're gonna get taken out soon enough. They're just not careful. So I can be the first one to get a kill down over to us. The side of Night Rider Scarlet wants to go in for that spam kill. But Sai's gonna be able to dash himself away. 44 HP. He's gonna be able to survive. He's gonna be able to get a better avenue and a better position for himself at the bare minimum. But it's just not as good as he would have expected because now Hydroflick is on all his own. Someone Hydroflick! What was that shot? Sends Roman Chopra down into the abyss. Scargot's gonna be able to spot out Sai. He knows exactly where Sai is. He's gonna call him up on his phone number. Here's the ringtone and takes him down. Out! Paralyx is gonna go for one kill. He swings him down. The Knight Rider's gonna be maybe the one to go in for that trade. And now it's all up to one more player. Badman versus the entire world. Badman on this Sova knows exactly where Rio is gonna be holding to around the corner. And hey, Badman. He just does door. not miss that shot. 27 HP, you have nothing to worry about because my name is Batman and I'm the Boogeyman. You'll have one and two on the score call, ladies and gentlemen. And with Batman with a beautiful clutch to bring everything back, I do believe that Team Alpha, they have their second win. They're going to be bringing the pain on towards the side of Team Bravo. They most certainly are. It is going to be Team Alpha to pull up round number one on the back of Batman's clutch as they get it on. And we've got a game on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. Now it is going to be the full buy coming in from the side of Team Bravo. They've got five phantoms across the board. Whereas Alpha, their maneuver of winning that round was a little costly because they lost four players. And Batman is now the only person with an assault rifle in his hand. And Sai, he's got a marshal. It is a potent weapon in the hands of somebody right. He might just be the person for it. He's struggling to find a kill over here as the side of Bravo make their way towards the A side. They eat a lot of damage. Hoax yet again down to less than 10 HP. I don't know how this guy is giving away his life so many times. But hey, they've taken control of the side. They're going to get the plant down. And then it's going to be Team Bravo to put Alpha in a 5v5 retake position. 
positions are gonna be good. Hydroflex is gonna be in for one. Hydroflex is absolutely delicious. Paradox. Beautiful shots coming out down from his bed. But at the same time, bad, bad. He's known as the boogeyman for a reason. He's swinging out. He's gonna be able to find two more kills for himself. He's gonna be able to see to all of the positions. Holds. He needs to get out of here. Blackhawk calls off another player. And bad, 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 bad. Come on. With a Hunter's Fury, with a forward arrow, you take down two players as well. That's just not good. But hey, it's Batman for you. He's gonna be able to make the impossible possible every single time. Ooh, yeah. It is the side of Alpha who are trying to establish their dominance now on the map of Bind. They don't want to let this go. And Batman is the connoisseur of that. He's the one who's been pulling off the strings and he's got another round where he is pretty much the hero. And they've pulled up round number two on the board. Oh. Now, side of Bravo. Got a little bit of a semi by coming in. Two Spectres, make that one. Two Marshals. Hydroflick. Loves that weapon. But Sai, he's got a weapon a little bit more deadlier than that Marshal. And he's gonna make it sing. He finds Knight Rider. And he's looking for more. He's going in deep. He eats a lot of that Molotov coming in. And he's gonna survive just by the skin of his teeth. As there's a lot of gun exchange, fire exchange happening towards this hookup position. Hoax. He's gonna be trying to find a kill through that smoke, but he's not gonna get any success. Paradox is careful. But what? Scar God, he finds Batman coming in a little bit too aggressively and punishes him for it. It's a 4v4, and there's three ultimates available, so they could just make this work if the Seekers come out. Rio, he does not find a kill onto Blackhawk. Blackhawk just finds a better weapon with a better weapon. And now here comes the Seekers from Scar God. He throws him in. Roman Chopra tries remaining. to take him down, but it's gonna be Spike his turret to take down Scar God, actually. This Hoax actually gets past. Ooh, this could be a little dangerous. Hoax could find two kills. Two kills. He looks for more. He escapes down, gives away his position, and gives away his life. It's gonna be Paradox to establish round number three for his team. As Alpha takes the lead, and Bravo, after the first two rounds, have sort, sort of slipped away yeah they could have gone in for trigger discipline play maybe something a little bit more different but they're spreading themselves out way too much they're spreading themselves thin way too often they need to go in together as a squad because you can see that the end game is there all of them are able to hit their shots all of them are getting close to take down their opposition but it's just not as clean as you would expect bravo they're suffering heavily because of the amount of engagements that they are missing out on together as a squad. The trades are just not there and Sai, he's not given any form of space away to them. Him being on this jet, this is what's dangerous about him. The way he's aggressive at the time. Are you kidding me? He no, no, jiggled with that, that hound. He jiggles the corner with the hound and Sai's just super confused and it works against him. Hydroflake's gonna be the one to get a taken down. Two rolls also in the process, but hey. Paradox is gonna be able to check out one player and the bare minimum trades are gonna be good. Scargun's gonna be the one to get another one with Roman Chopra getting one on to hoax. And now Badman he's in the good position. He's not gonna be in the corner. Night Trader is gonna be the one to take him on down out and now Blackhawk. Last person remaining, and just as we were talking about the side of Team Bravo, with the dog jiggling around the corner, I mean a wolf jiggling around the corner, he's gonna be the one to shut everything down here. Gargon, just a lot for his team. And now Blackhawk versus the entire world. I don't think it's gonna happen. He's gonna get bare minimal for one kill. But yeah, now he's done for. Him beacon down. Blackhawk, 1v2, no time to play with over here. Scargod playing the position to perfection, knows that he cannot be spammed through that particular middle box. And he's just baiting out. He was waiting for Knight Rider to come out, right here. and he gets the kill. But that that hound jiggle was my favorite, dude. What the hell? Yeah. Man? I wish you could that other instant replay. Playing, playing with Sai over there. Sai got tagged down to 10 HP after that, because Knight Rider just swung out and gave him a headshot with the Phantom. But it worked out. That jiggle was just really questionably good, I believe. Hey, if you don't know what you're doing, your opponent doesn't know what you're doing. So I would say it's a win-win situation. Yeah, fair enough. I would say it's a win-win situation. Fair enough. I, you know. But it's a little bit of a uh, tricky matter when you have utility like that that can do jiggle peeks for you instead of yourself, right? I mean, like, it, I didn't I know. Should I, I shoot the that's... dog or not? <laughs> yeah, I don't. That's the thing. But then, you know, you can't do that with a Sova Owl drone, can you? You 
can only do that with the, the Hound, I believe, because it's mobility. But right now, it's Rio who's trying to expand his mobility. Throws in the Hunter's Fury. Nightbird actually finds Blackhawk. It's going to be Paradox's Boombot to try and find some ground. Oh, and he's stuck around over here with that Judge. He gets one, and they still know that he's here. They don't want to challenge him because they know that in the close range, he can just blow their heads right off. As Batman with the backstab is going to not be successful. Rio takes him down. And now in a 4v2, I don't see this working out for Team Alpha any day. Yeah, Paradox is just not even going to be swinging around that corner. He knows for a fact that he's going to get taken out. So with just a classic as a secondary, if he had a sheriff, maybe things would be a little bit more possible. Paradox is just vibing with this judge. Standing. Yeah, he wants to swing around the corner. Night Rider's gonna be the one to get that kill. Sai does get a pickup on towards Hydra Flake, but that's all that he's gonna get. This is just a wraparound play, and this is just a save. Coming on down to from the side of Sai, he doesn't want to give up this operator, but at the same time, he's not looking behind him. He's not checking it, and now he feels the ultra instinct in his veins. For a fact, he needs to be careful. He's probably gonna get one more. No time. Stray survive, run on the wayside. But he's gonna swing around the corner, get another kill on the knife rider. Sai deals massive okay. amounts of economic damage. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, this round is very much successful, I would say, when it comes down to the terms of the save. They're able yeah. to take on three of the players. They're gonna be able to shut down the economy just a little bit from the side of Team Apple, but not too much because they still have a win streak bonus in their favor. Still, still gonna be able to go in for buys and still have enough money in the following round, even if they out here i didn't really understand the point of i mean i know you want to hunt him down fair enough okay that's all right but together yeah it's just one by one not gonna work out Sai gets another kill dashes away to safety what a beautiful execution immediately team bravo have lost it and sky Sai, he takes out the sky forgive me for the wordplay but I don't really see this going on in any form of way in the for in the favor of Bravo. Hydro Flick and Oaks do find two back, and it's gonna be Sai. Okay, with the last knife, he pops off Hydro Flick's head. And he's got a lot more to play with. Blackhawk gets another, and Alpha strike back as Sai. My God, what is this guy made of? That's Sai on the duelist for you, ladies and gentlemen. This guy can perform to its heart's content when he is on this jet. He knows exactly how to use its ability. He knows how when to play aggressive, how to play aggressive. And then he can perform to the best of his capabilities as well when he has an operator in his hand. He is known to be one of the best operator players in our entire region when it comes down to the much more control-based aggressive play style. When he is aggressive though, this guy can be an absolute menace every single time. And with the positions already good and the first initial round going in their favor really strong, 4-4 four four on the scorecard, ladies and gentlemen, and the match is just so close here. It's not one-sided showing. Every single one of the players are able to show up here. Raman Chopra wants to go in for an engagement. He's just not going to be able to find it, though. It's not looking as good as they can be. Raman Chopra's going to be good for one kill onto one. But Hydroflick, with this Marshall, is getting so much value. Hoax is going to be able to take down one. Hydroflick takes down the second. One by one, they're making the plays happen. And Hydroflick with a Marshall, man. This guy doesn't need a gun. Give this man a Marshall, and he's going to destroy your entire squad. And it's all up to Blackhawk. Blackhawk versus the entire world. He is in a, such a good position. He's not going to be expecting it on the market. Rio's going to get taken out. And now it's all up to Hydra Flake. Once again with Justin Marshall in his hand. He could be playing it just a little bit more better though. He's in a good spot. Oh no. <laughs> just a little edge of that Molotov. Good enough to take him out. Unfortunately, Hydra Flake. He's not going to be surviving that. He was the hero of that round for the side of Team Bravo. Uh, he got one, he got a second, and he got a third as did. well. I think I did lose because of Hydra Flick as well. But it's fine. You got incredible shots and you got a highlight reel out of it. So well, you have I nothing don't... to complain about. Yeah, fair enough. But I think they should have just stuck to the B side instead of rotating back to A, right? Yeah, over rotations are a thing, especially on the map of mine. The teleport is just allow you for easy rotation. Sometimes you feel like you have to go for it. Well, certainly. Again, oh my god, again, 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 this guy goes for it. And oh my god, Sai! Oh, oh no, he did it! He's gonna get it. He's gonna Every get it. Every single time, dude. That dog jiggles the corner and Sai dies. Oh I think we know Sai's counter. You gotta play Sky and you gotta use the dog to counter him. But just jiggling around the corner. Jiggle, jiggle. 
That's what the name of the game is right now, guys, for Scar God. Alright, Joe goes in. Roman finds the better of him. And he goes in for another peek, but he's not gonna be allowed Out to be successful in that. Rio finds him and now Badman. He knows there's nothing he can do. Maybe throw out a couple of darts to try and find some value in terms of economical damage. But with 11 HP, I don't think oh. there's much he can do. Scar God comes out on top, takes him pretty easily. And it's pretty much what we saw in the last map. It's 5-5 five to five yet again over here, Aggressive. And this match is really, really, you know, tough. And it, for both sides... The competition is really heavy, and neither of them are giving up their, you know, ground or their foot off the gas pedal. They want this win, and they want it so bad, and I love it because it's entertainment for us 24-7. It's just... I don't know, man. It feels like all of these teams, they know what to expect, they know what to do to try and get a lot of these wins against one another, but at the same time, it could be bad! Paradox. He literally scared me to death here. Hopefully he's not going to really get that reverse kill on Blackhawk's going to be good for one kill at the bare minimum with his own orbital strike. But Hoax, look at his position. Pulls out a rocket on his shoulder, but he's not going to be clearing up most of all from the flag. Oh, Star got the hydro flag though. They're going to be good for kills on the other side of the map. They do have the B-side under their control, and this is going to be a rotation play for them. Scargoth's going to be good for one. We're going to the corner. Take the last two. It's Scargoth, ladies and gentlemen. Scargoth with the Scar Peaks are just going to be too strong. Crosser placement on point. The Dot Crosser as well to make the pain happen as well for their side. Five and six on the scorecards. Possibly a five and seven. And a repeat of what happened on map number one. But if it's anything like map number one universe, I'm kind of worried. You know how that worked out. And this is gonna happen again. I think on the map of Vine, we could just be seeing a 2020 scoreline as well. I mean, if you would like to go for it, sure. Right now, though, you might be seeing a 6-6 six to six or a 7-5 to five, again in the hands of Team Bravo. They have the advantage, and Scargot this time again finds informational value towards the tower's position. Sai? He gets oh! one key. second, okay. Okay, Sai. The Marshal on, just doesn't sing for Hydro Flake, it's for Sai as well. Here. And now in the 4v3, Paradox, he comes to the back seven, try. finds Hoax, and there just is nothing he could do. Scargot needs to pull out a clutch, another 4k needs to come in from his hand. As Rio, looking for something on the A side, could find Roman. I don't think it's gonna be that easy. Sai and Paradox have both doubled up over here. And this is a really deadly duo to fight off against. Scar God, he's got two flashes available. He might just wanna use them. Getting a little too cheeky over here. Time's running out pretty quickly. I wanna come up over here. Here goes the flash. But the timing was just too not good. Paradox goes in for the showstopper, does not get the kill. Scar God. 30 seconds, and his life is gone. It's gonna be Sai to take him out, and it's gonna be a beautiful run coming in from Sai. Switching as sides. Six to six scoreline has been established, and we have pretty much a really neck and neck game right now, ladies and gentlemen. It's no more a, you know, one side of the fair in terms of Parax trying to get all the kills that he could, because this time it's been a little bit more quiet than he was in the previous game. And this just goes to show that one game or just five minutes between a game, or maybe ten minutes, can make all the difference. Yeah, honestly speaking, six and six on the scorecards. The matches are so close, and this is even Stevens. There's no advantages for either of these teams, especially on the six and six scoreline. We could just be starting a brand new game here, and it wouldn't really even matter. Both of these squads, they need to dig in deep, and they need to switch in, Getting switch ahead. out their strategies as much as they possibly can to try and take all these fights for their end. But with the pushes already coming on down through, it is going to be a beautiful kill from the side of Sai. He's not going to use a shorty to just send Hydra Flag into the next dimension, but Paradox, he's not going to be giving anything away, not just yet to the side of Hulk. Shots are going to be going, Ramachokra swing around the corner, it's going to be able to take down Knight Rider as well. And one by one, the attacking side for both of these teams are just so potent here, Universe. They're able to find kills here on the attacking side, like it's nobody's business. Last player oh. standing. But that, that's going to hurt. Oh my god, and it's gonna be another beautiful round for Team Alpha as Batman takes down the last two players. 
It is round number seven for them on the board. Bravo. Not too much to worry, though, because even if they get this round, uh, you know, get taken away from them, which is an eco, it's not going to be a problem because they can make an immediate comeback. 66 is a scoreline that allows you to do that. And, um, yeah, bravo. They need to be high on their heels and they need to be careful because the side of Alpha are looking pretty good now. They're going to have five Spectres. Now, make that four, actually. Just one... Frenzy that's on the hands of Rio. And they're gonna be moving it towards B this time. Alright, Hydro Flip is waiting for them yet again. The Marshall side oh. dashes in. Oh, Can't oh, kill us no. That grenade was just too good. And now they're gonna have a problem, Alpha. That's Bravo. All five of them are on the B side. And they're running back towards A, where they know that Alpha is gonna be hitting as well. Scar God. He's just having a little bit of an exchange going on over here. It's like a weapon showcase between their players. As the plan is going to go down. And now in a 3v5 over here, Aggressive. Not quite sure if Alpha have everything that they need to get this uh, retake coming in. The main thing that I want to highlight here, you know, Bruce, was that in that last fight, that was the teammate grenade, but we'll talk about that a little bit later because someone's so much get that first initial shot. Hydro Flick not gonna be able to get a lot of value out of that. Marshall Blackhawk is gonna be good with a free fire. No, Hydro Flick he swings around the corner with his gun out. And he was reloading. And with that, Batman's gonna be the last player to get a kill on the Knight Rider. Send them back home, but I honestly say that this was a very successful leap around. Getting Two, uh, getting three kills in the process and getting it purely based upon classics and not even anything else. Really good round for them, but at the same time, I don't know. I feel as though Paradox kind of got his buddy killed, threw in a grenade, side dashed it, and took half of the damage because of a grenade from Paradox. Yeah, that's gonna hurt just a little bit. Most well, certainly. Team Alpha. They got the advantage, and I'm pretty sure they won't want to give it away. Sai dashes in, and he's just jumping around. I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> but with the he's shorty, himself, yeah, there, there's nothing much you can do with the shorty over there. Nightmare like takes him out. As Paradox is trying to find some success, Not gonna get any. Knight Rider is still playing around this smoke. He's going out, and he's gonna oh, find no. nobody. Batman and Paradox find kills. And it's gonna be Alpha to get the advantage. Roman finds another Hydro standing. Flick on the backstab is gonna find Paradox, and now it's a 1v1. What just happened? How did it go to a 1v1? Universe, weren't we just in a 3 versus 3 situation? Hoax gets a random kill down towards that B side, and now it's a 1v1. Hoax versus Roman, and Hoax already knows what to expect. Roman's not even gonna expect a peek from him. And what just happened here, man? Like, we were just in a 3 versus 3 situation. Two seconds later, it's a 1v1, and the lady just told me that, yo, it's a 1v1 already. Hulk's and Roman Chopra are holding him down, and Hulk's already knows where Roman Chopra's going to be coming for. There's no way he's going to be going in for a flank rotation from the side of CT. He doesn't know what to expect from Hulk's, and Hulk's knew that, hey, if I want to get the best possible advantage, what do I need to do? I need to push forward. I need to push outside of Fuka, where I know he's not going to be going in for a wide swing. He's just going to be walking. In that situation, that's going to be a beautiful round coming on down through from the side of Team Bravo, bringing the ball onto their court once again. And that the, the previous rounds were just so expensive that now, Team Alpha, they're being forced onto an eco round. And Hulk, this grenade should be good. This grenade should be able to get a lot of value and a lot of commitment here. Hulk is going to go for one kill, but he's not going to go for more than that. Kind of like with a massive flank of his own. It's going to be a fast one as well. And now it's all up to Scargon. Easily takes on Paradox. The shots are going to be clean from his end. And now it's a one versus four. But I think in a one versus four, you would want sign in a situation. Sai, 1v4, gets one kill, three more to go, but it looks really difficult in this position. He's got a dash, but it doesn't matter. Knight Rider is going to find him, and it's going to be Bravo to answer back as they put up another round. It's going to be 8 to 8, and we're going so neck and neck in this. I love it, Aggressive. It's just so beautiful, both of these teams out there just going back and forth. It's like, even if they give away two rounds, they pull back three immediately. And then there's just another exchange of battle between these two teams where, again, it's 9 to 9, 10, 11, again, it's 11 to 11. That's how it was in the previous map. And as if that's how it's going to be in this map as well. 
Positions good, with the position strong. We should be able to find something more here at the bare minimum. But shots are going to be going on in, but they're just not switching up their strategies just yet. Idaflix right around the corner. Maybe he can go in for the first initial shot with the first initial kill. He's got to go for one, but he's just not going to be good for a second. He's not going for an overheal in those type of situations, my man. He's going to get caught out, and Dyfren is going to give Sai a kiss on the cheek, but Sai reels back from that and shoots him in the face with the sheriff. Yeah, Sai is just not into that. Yo. Finds one. It's gonna be Paradox Ooh. trying to get another, but it's gonna be Scarguard actually. He pulls it back. 3v2. You should Raman, run. He's got his ultimate online and he throws it into where it showers. But what he doesn't know is that Heaven is unguarded and it's gonna be Hope to throw down a grenade one that's probably gonna take his life. Rio swings out, finds the kill. Batman left alone, finds one headshot. He's got two more to go. Throws in that recon, has got a lot of angles to check, but it doesn't even matter where he's looking. It's straight where Skarkot's gonna come and peek out from and buy his round for his team. He just throws the bullet right between his eyeballs. And it's gonna be Bravo to take the lead now, as we are gonna see Bravo to try and assert their dominance. It's been a little, like, you know, I don't really know how to say this. Is this going so back and forth aggressive? Because I feel like the next round is going to be alphas and then it's going to be nine to nine. And then Bravo's going to take the one after that and then alpha after, after that. It's just, you know. The storyline like, continues at the exact same. Yeah. Like, the overall king storyline for both of these teams, they're... I don't know, dude. Remember when I was saying this could be a one-sided affair when we saw the teams initially, but that's not the case here. The way that Zai, Paradox, Star God, Knight Rider, Hydra Flake, they're performing so beautifully at Zai, uh, a little bit ambitious, I would say, man. Hydra Flake's gonna get one more, Hydra Flake's gonna get his second, he's looking for his third, he's not gonna be able to find it, but hey, I don't think that Batman's gonna be able to get this kill on his Star God. Good jiggles from his part, good cross replacement as well, and Paradox versus the entire world. A 2 HP and a Sheriff shot to boot. He's gonna be good for one, but it's just not gonna be good for a second. Scar, what's gonna be the one to take him on down? Out. 8 and 10 on the scorecards, and another round win coming up down two legs to Jelda for the side of Team Bravo. They have double digits now, Universe. One more round off that 11. And if they do find that 11, that's gonna be a forced eco coming on down through from the side of Team Alpha. They will not have money to go in for a proper force by a yeah, it's been a little bit of a, a tricky moment for Alpha in the last three rounds, I believe. Bravo have pulled up a 10 to 8 lead, and they have a tantalizing hold on this map, at least for the last couple of minutes. Now, Paradox. Find success, it's not gonna find anything. Neither is the orbital strike coming in from uh, Knight Rider. They expected him to be there, and now, Paradox, he actually oh, takes he down it. one! Oh, C finds Paradox and both the Rays are gonna take each other down. Bravo! They've put themselves in a good position and now in the 2v2, as another bunch of trades come in and go, it's gonna be Alpha who's taking control of the side and yet again another plan gonna go down. And here comes the Hunter's Fury. Blackhawk did exactly what you expect, oh, but Raman didn't. Hydra goes in through and he's gonna find some success. I don't want to know. Oh, to go oh my god. There's a reason his name is Hydra Flick. Yeah, that guy just split to its heart's content. I wanted to see it from his perspective, sadly. We're not going to be able to see it other than through the eyes of Blackhawk, who would absolutely flicked on hard. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, 8 and 11 of the scorecards. I called it, didn't I, Universe? And now, when you look at the buys from the side of Team Alpha, they are not looking good. Two half shields. And a phantom and a vandal. One band, uh, one bulldog from the side of wish.com and Blackhawk being forced onto a specter. It's just not gonna happen. It's gonna be difficult because with a bulldog, I don't know how much value he's gonna be getting out of that. It will be really difficult, but if anyone can do it, it has to. Be. Ooh. Scar. He gets a little bit of a uh, pressured moment and he finds himself dead. Gonna be now Team Bravo already on Here. disadvantage. Team Alpha. Try and move into this. They're going for it, and they've got a lot of people waiting in their way. Hydra Flick being one of them who's stopping them. Paradox goes down. Blackhawk finds the trade, but it's gonna be Nightmare and Hoax to get back two of their own. And now it's 3v2. The Orbital Strike is available. 
and he's gonna wait to use it because he knows that there's players who are down low. Knight Rider, he's playing the patience game now, but look at where he is. He's oh. nowhere close to this side. It's essentially a 2v2 right now, and Blackhawk and his teammate are pushing up in the right direction, but Ox is gonna find the better of one, and Batman is gonna find him. It's gonna be a 2v1, and the one thing that Knight Rider really needs to do is probably find, because he, he's so confused, look at him. Left. He's just jiggling around this position of A short. He's thinking whether should I go to B, should I stay in A. He's got the teleporter available, and he should be going in for it. There it is. He's finally going in for it. Here comes the Obra Strike. It's gonna hit him a little bit. No. Batman survives it, but he's got no time to play with. Here goes the Molotov as well. As Batman is gonna go down to Knight Rider coming on the flank. And it's gonna be match point for the side of Team Bravo. Match Team point. Bravo, one more round for them to win everything out here and send the side of Team Alpha back home. You still need to remember, they are the ones who went out on map number one on a 15 and 13 scoreline. And now, they're going to be the ones to try and win everything out here as well. I don't know, dude. Things could just be getting dicey here. Because looking at the buys, they don't look pretty whatsoever. A judge, a vandal with a half shield, a gun from wish.com, a guardian, and a specter. What do you expect? What do you do here? There's not much that you can do with the side. He needs to get a skill. He's going to be able to slap Hydra Flick in the forehead with that judge. Side's going to be good for another run inside. He's the difference maker. He's going to be the one to take it all back. And forget that I said anything. It's going to be side making that difference with Blackhawk and Paradox on their side. I was wrong, man. I think I called it a little bit too soon. And now Team Bravo, they're going to send me a couple of angry messages saying that I dubbed them with my caster's curse. Yeah, I think Alpha are going to be thanking you for that. But Bravo, if they let it slip from this point, I think this, it's going to hurt them really quite a bit. Scar God being hunted when he's got, you know, just a Phantom and a Seekers. He's got a bird to his use as well, which he throws out. That's a fake and Scar God actually finds two. And he can't choose to teleport himself if he wants to, but he wants this fight. He wants to cause econo economical damage. Might just be able to do it. No. Blackhawk, gonna swing out, gets his kill. And even though two weapons were dropped, this was a pretty quick round because Sai jumps, gets one, picks up the weapon, swings out, gets another. Rio goes down, and then Knight Rider, he was left all alone between two angles to fight off, and there was nothing he could do. Now, Bravo, although they have a buy, it's okay. They've got economy to work with. Still going to be a little difficult. And look who's on the operator now. Now it's going to be where the real fun is at. Dyke Rider on a Brimstone pulls out an operator. The old dog learning a couple of new tricks to maybe bring it back on the near side. It closed out the last moment of the round, but... Hydra Flick misses out on his shot, man. He's just not gonna be able to find it, but still, side super run. low. Hope is gonna be the one to get that kill. He's gonna be able to find a lot here. Ultimates have been up from San Roman Chopra. He is gonna be able to get a better position for himself. Maybe going for a push, maybe going for a hold, but it's gonna be quite difficult to say the very least. Because with the Orbital Strike still available, no one can go in for a strong, hardy push. Not just yet, but Hulk still has a grenade. He can easily swing out. He's gonna get the first initial kill. He's looking for one more. Skorgas really going to take him all down. Out. It's a two versus four situation. They have nothing to work with. Paradox does have a grenade. He can deny the defuse for just a little while longer. They cannot go in for a push. Halfway defuse is already done. They don't have anything to worry about. Hulk sacrifices himself for the cause. They have everything in their arsenal. There's no way that they survive. Knight Rider is good for one kill. Paradox and easily cannot do anything here. Knight Rider is going to be the one to shut him on down now. And then the halfway defuse already on the cards. They have nothing to worry about. Nothing to fret about. 9 and 13 on the score cards, ladies and gentlemen. And it's going to be the side of Team Bravo. Taking it all away. Bringing it back in their favor. And right at the very end. They take down their opposition, Team Alpha. They just didn't know what hit him. I mean, they probably did know what hit him. And they just, you know, I think didn't have what it takes. Just like how you have been hitting a little bit aggressive with a little bit of tech issue. So we're going to be right back, ladies and gentlemen, as Bravo have taken this map 2-0. And we're going to see another one coming soon. Okay. But okay. the thing about this map over here, Grace, particularly, is that 
you know, Team Alpha, they had the advantage in so many parts of the map. They just couldn't. They, they just could not, you know, make to capitalize. They could not capitalize on it because there were so many times where Bravo, even though they gave away these, you know, map control positions uh, with which they had, uh, Alpha, as much control as they took, the first half ended off on a very, you know, uh, subtle note of it being one to one. And it kind of hurt them a little bit because the amount of economical damage that was caused to them in some of these rounds were a lot. And uh, Team Bravo made sure that they felt the heat, Alpha, and they did. And as a result, it was, you know, the second half where they turned it up a little bit more, especially in the last couple of rounds when it was eight to eight. That's exactly when they knew that, you know what, this is our time to hit the pedal to the metal and take it all the way to the top. The main thing that you really do need to highlight here from the side of Team Alpha was that they just kind of dropped the ball in a pretty bad way. They had a lot of rounds that they could have won out, but it felt like they were a little bit too uncoordinated in comparison to the side of Team Bravo. Team Bravo, constantly, they were going in for team engagements. They were playing it systematically. They were playing it really slowly and they were playing it to their own strengths. But for the side of Bravo, or for the side of Alpha, sorry, they were a little bit more rambunctious. They were going in for fast pushes. Sai just absolutely popping out of nowhere with a judge. Sometimes Cork in the face of Fire like shutting all down. Pulls out his knife, pulls up an updraft. He has 36 HP and he just wants to keep on going. Like that's Sai for you. Sometimes a little bit too much aggression can hurt you. But at the same time, hey, Alpha was having fun. They were able to pull off a lot of incredible plays. And honestly, I do believe that the Marshall being such a staple in the meta now, I never thought that the Marshall would be such an incredible weapon. Now everyone picks it up when it comes down to equal rounds. 1,100 credits and the potency of being able to one-shot anyone at long ranges and also close ranges if you can hit those shots. That is what makes the Marshall so incredible here. And Hydroflake and also Sai, they were able to make perfect use out of this one weapon and turn rounds around in a matter of seconds. And I have to give props to Hydroflake in this matchup here in particular universe because this guy on Vine, on that arena, has performed like leaps and beyond any, anyone that expected coming on out from him. Beautiful shots from him, beautiful potential from his end as well. And his teammates did a lot to support him as well. Scar got hitting beautiful naughty shots, getting four days over and over again. Team Bravo, they deserve this one. And Team Alpha, they just fell just a little bit short. But hey, let's head on out over to our sub brackets, ladies and gentlemen, and see how it is going to be updated and who's going to be moving on down forward and what match we're going to be going for on the 8 p.m. game. Because looking at Team Charlie and Team Delta, that's also going to be another incredible matchup. But for now, Team Bravo, hey, they're going to be heading on down forward. Yeah, most certainly. They are going to be going forward. A 2-0 victory over Team Alpha. And it is the TEC Gauntlet All-Stars where they're going to be making their mark. And it is, uh, you know, somebody at, for sure is going to win this. And uh, it might just be, uh, you know, some people who haven't really had a chance at glory in the Season 1. Or maybe m might not even have it in Season 2. But they definitely have a chance to win something under the, under the banner of TEC Gauntlet. It could be under the All-Stars. And these players, they have the potential to do it. And let's see how it's going to work out for them. But right now, we have got another match coming up pretty soon for us, ladies and gentlemen. Charlie and Delta. They're going to be playing up at the 8 p.m. game. Now we're going to see a lot more of these players come into action. It's going to be great aggressive, isn't it? Yeah, that's going to be an incredible matchup for sure. Because when you do consider what kind of a game plan the side of Team Alpha and Team Bravo had... I really am confused of what Team Charlie and Delta are going to be bringing down to the table. I'm really excited as well, because if it's anything like this matchup here, Universe, it's just going to get even better and better moving on down the line. But for now, that's going to be all that we have for you for today. We're going to be setting up the 8 p.m. game. But before we do sign on off, make sure to check out the links down below in the description. If you want to play like all these streamers, if you want to stream yourself, and if you want to play like a pro moving on down the line in tournaments like this, make sure to get yourself the best deals from the side of W Black and AMD Ryzen Radiant. Get yourself a processor. Get yourself an SSD. Beef your setup up, because if you want to play like the pros, you got to buy like them as well. But for now, it's going to be your boy, perhaps join my universe, signing on off, and we're going to be back with you real soon with the LG Ultra Gear All-Stars event, powered by WD Black and AMD Ryzen Radiant. We'll catch you in just a little bit.